all for it. It is Thursday. I wasn't here yesterday. There was drama that went away, came, it went away. The drama was here, then the drama went away. You can check the good book. Enjoy. Enjoy the little story of IRL Preacher and Baby Preacher and Lady Emma and all those good people. I say a wonderful hello to all these people in the chat. So many more of you showing up on a daily basis since we started doing some streaming. Playing some Bastion today. Mm, so many of you asking, <gasps> you stream at a bad time. Your streaming is not tolerable to my needs. I apologize. Somebody's asleep somewhere in the world. You can check the VODs. I'm not uploading them to YouTube. No, because they're like eight hours long. It'd be ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. You can check the VODs on my Twitch channel. Past broadcast will start with something like day one. The next day will be day two, and so on and so forth. And then you can find the games and all that good shit. Eee! <laughs> 10 out of 10 for streaming. Lots of people enjoying it. <sighs> it is the workshop. We're supposed to do the workshop on a Wednesday, but as I said, I couldn't be there. Sad face. But it is Thursday. Thursday is the best day. Thursday is the day where we make PG videos. That's Preach and Ghost, which means Mr. Ghost, who is watching in the stream right now, but will refuse to talk so you don't start spamming him. Say hello anyway. Comes over here and we make good videos for you guys. We try and make some entertaining videos about video games and all that good stuff. And try and just make a little smile on your face. So we're looking forward to that. But right now it's workshop time. What the hell is the workshop? So many thousands of you joining now the YouTube channel. Oh! The workshop is for World of Warcraft. I used to be really, really good at World of Warcraft. I don't play as a raider anymore. But I still know a thing or two about sundering those mobs. What I say to you is this. If you're struggling with your class and you've gemmed and you've reforged and you've done all that good shit and you can't work out why something's not going right, record yourself playing. Use some free software. Upload it to the YouTubes. Right? Put it on the chubs and then email me. Workshop at preachgaming.com. I'll take a look at it and see if we can figure out what the hell is going wrong. As such, today we're going to look at two awesome classes. One I love and hold dear in my heart. Guesses can go away. And one that I don't particularly like and never really have, but is still an awesome class to have in a raid. It's must, must, must have. Must have. We're going to be looking at a prot warrior. Prot warrior. We're going to be looking at a protection warrior. Oh, look at that. DK, DK. Wrong. Prot warrior. Prot warrior. <clears throat> the originator of violence. The tanking gods themselves. The prot warrior. We're also going to be looking at the discipline priest. <clears throat> discipline priest. Yes. That class that annoys every other healer in the game. That class, that spec, that annoys everybody in the game. Yes, be trolling. But we're going to ask ourselves the question, how do I diss? Because our player today doesn't know how to diss. I'm not dissing. I'm not dissing it correctly. I want to diss, but I'm not dissing. I'm not dissing. Prop Warrior, we're going to do second. Yes, we're going to do the second on the Prop Warrior. Now, Prop Warrior... I'm going to show you the UI. It's not my UI. It's not my UI. Therefore, we will discriminate against it profusely. Not that I'm biased or anything, but if you're not using my UI, you're doing it wrong. It's just my opinion. And you're going to tell me what you think. What you think. I'm going to set the hounds of chat upon you. Let's see if they can find any problems. Whew. To the gameplay. Hello. And up we go. Enjoy. Enjoy. Noob UI. What is this? What is this? I'll note that this is windowed mode. That the recorder has used as such it's not my time and date and stuff on the screen <laughs> what do you think what do you think what do you think two raid frames what's this two raid frames true there's one thing that's absolutely brilliant about this ui and nobody's gonna guess it there's one thing that's absolutely fantastic <sighs> i love it so much I do love it so much. Bad UI? I actually think the UI is damn fine and dandy. Damn fine and dandy. Yeah, they don't have the s fucking swag all over the screen of the healing numbers. Don't have it all over the screen. I love you so much for that. I really do. Every healer video I get is just like this green toxic monster, right? The toxic Avenger has just come and splurted his junk sauce all over my face. So hard to watch. Uh, we do have double raid frames, kind of a downer, kind of a big fat downer, uh, but this one is actually fine. I'm going to talk about the cooldowns a little bit. There's some important stuff going on over here, like Power Infusion, Mind Bender, and our lovely Spirit Shell, our Praise Expression, kind of tucked off away to the side where we're not really looking. We've got our cooldowns here, uh, but yeah, it's kind of okay. I kind of want to see these things here. Now, do we have any Dispriest up in our chat today? 
It's important. It is kind of important. Do we have any disc priests? If we do, I assume we do have a couple of disc priests in the chat who are super pro. If I was to ask you sort of this question, if I was to look at your healing meter on your recount or whatever, after a fight is completed, what would the top four spells be? Excluding Divine Aegis. Divine Aegis. Excluding Divine Aegis, which is of course a proc. We don't care about that. What would the top four spells be? Atonement. Atonement. No, in the healing meters. In the healing meters. In those healing meters. Penance. Mm, you know, Spirit Shell. Yep. Spirit Shell. Atonement. <laughs> Look at these guys. Spirit Shell. Spirit Shell. Spirit Shell. Yep. 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 Power Word Shield. Good. Like it. Power Word Shield. Power Word Shield. Renew. Mm, mm. Penance. Atonement. Spirit Shield. Bubble. Yeah. All those kind of things. Um... Right, how do we diss? How do we diss? Let's look at our fellow healers. How do we diss? We have with us a Resto Druid. And a Resto Shaman. Alright guys. <laughs> you, you guys could go and chill. <laughs> you guys chill. It's okay. No, I'm only kidding. They're not that bad. Not that bad at all, but as on the Dis Priest on this fight, if I was to say things like, oh, you guys are coming, that's that's cute. That's cute. Because, you know, you're pretty much you're going to get hammered to the ground uh, by what I'm capable of doing here. Dis Priest can destroy this fight. They can absolutely wreck this fight completely. Um, but we're not going to see that. And that's because of all the spells we just mentioned, they're not going to get cast. Yeah, they're not going to get cast. Now, I made tons of notes about this video because we're kind of dissing wrong. We're not dissing. We're not dissing. Our job as a diss priest is to put absorbs on there. One thing we can know about this fight is that there is lots of damage flying around. And so our uh, absorbs, absorbs are actually really, really good. Because people are going to be taking kind of a lot of damage. But also give us a little opportunity to build up good bubbles. These kind of breaks in between, which is always nice. So we're going to start off. I made lots of notes. And then I was like, it starts going well. We get a couple of bubbles out. We've got our pom on the tank. And you can see the debuffs here. So we can see our power word shield. We've got our palm on the tank. We've got our other shield over here. And then our job here is to take position. And our other secondary role is to be the dispeller of people who are sand traps. We are assigned with that because in the notes of our wonderful uh, submitter here, they have less mana issues than anybody else. Which is interesting to me. First thing what we're going to note is this. Downtime like a motherfucker. People are taking damage and we're kind of waiting. This is what I kind of describe when I see this in this piece as a penance waiter. Now that's not a great title, but it's, it makes sense. Oh. Just gonna, just gonna just wait for penance and then I'll heal again. Um, no. It's not how we diss. Diss doesn't have to stop. Ever. Right? Duracell. Duracell bunny. That's what we do. That's what we do. This way, this penance waiters kind of like, mm, it's kind of like, hey, you know, I could do something. Atonement. Every single time. If we don't really have anything to heal, or it's little tiny heals or whatever, we don't have to renew shields or whatever, then we always have this opportunity to just start DPSing the fuck out of things and just nuking them to the ground and increasing our healing and doing all sorts of good stuff like that. But we don't do any of that at all. Ever. We don't DPS at all throughout this entire fight. Uh, we don't do anything, even under the effects of Bloodlust, where we can do significant, not inconsequential damage, while also providing solid healing, uh, which would be nice to see, but instead we kind of chill, we wait and put our heals on, so that's the first thing that clocked my eye, first thing that clocked my eye is that we were playing like that. Now, we're kind of doing a combination of things, we're not going one way or the other, we're kind of, we're, what we're doing in this scenario is we're healing too much. Now it sounds, sounds odd. But we are. We're healing too much. We're putting out too much actual health instead of absorbs. We're healing too much, right? We're just doing straight up too much healing. We're going to be casting a lot of things like Greater Heal. Which, if you check logs, not really. Sometimes, sure, but not really. We're going to be doing a lot of things like Flash Heal. We're going to do lots of straight up raw healing. Not really what we do. It's not really how we play. And as a consequence of having this sort of holy hybrid disc thing going on we're actually a little bit slow to the mark you can see there's a lot of downtime going on and it's iffy now one thing you got to notice is we're a minute into this video 
Mm. Yeah. We've been in combat now for a minute and a half. We have yet to use mind bend mind bender in any way. In fact, we had downtime, so that mind bender's kind of gone to waste now. We haven't spirit shelled. We haven't power infused. We haven't inner focused. We haven't done any of these things. We've not done any of them. Yet people are taking damage. And it's not dissing. While we thought that Spirit Shell could be in uh, waiting to be saved. That is an option. Every time I do a healer video, it's maybe they're waiting for something. I'm going to tell you now. Spirit Shell gets used twice in this whole encounter. Which runs a length of 8 minutes. We use Spirit Shell twice. Is how often we're going to use Spirit Shell. We're going to use Mindbender twice. And that's it. That's all we're going to use in that period of time. In 8 minutes, we're going to use Spirit Shell just the twice and we're only going to use mind bender twice as well and this is obviously because we're trying to heal too much instead of doing what we're good at which is preventing damage we have this awesome awesome ability to essentially increase the health of the entire raid at will and it's going to get used and we can put out outrageous damage and our resto shaman and our resto druids are going to hate you for it when you start dissing. When you start actually dissing, okay? That's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. As I said, these are very short cooldowns. Very, very short cooldowns. Uh, they're super short cooldowns. And we need to be taking advantage of all of them. In fact, things like POM will stick around far too long. Uh, they'll stick around far too long. So you can see this continues on. With us doing this sort of waiting around. You can see this waiting around going on. But we're at pretty much full mana and we've still got mind bender and all this. We're not running worried about mana issues at all. It's not even in question. But there's so much more we could be doing as a player. As a player. It's important to remember that we are a dis priest and we need to play as such. If people need raw healing, that's why your bros are here. That's why they're there. They want raw healing. They love raw healing. You're giving a resto druid the chance for all his hots to tick all the time. He's creaming his little pants off. He's loving it. He's absolutely loving it. Yes, absorbs do show on recount. The same with our resto shaman. It's unlikely that we would see this scenario normally with a resto druid and a resto shaman above a dis priest in a fight like this. Very, very rare. And it's down to this downtime, this penance waiting. What I will say is your situational awareness, in the email you sent me, you said you worried about the main thing that a lot of healers suffer from, which is tunnel visioning the HP bars. You don't really do that. You don't need to worry about that as much. You thought you were very much uh, tunnel visioning my healing bars. You're not. You're actually really cool with your environment. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry about that one little tiny little bit. One little tiny bit. But what we're doing is we're not playing our class. Is what, is that, we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're not taking advantage of what we're doing. You see some greater heals, some binding heals. Here we go. Another greater heal. This doesn't do this. They don't. I went through the top 20 or so world of logs for dis priests, uh, especially on normal TOT of here. Only one of them had a greater heal cast. It's something that you should know. Only one of those dis priests had a greater heal cast at all, and it was one. One uh, dis priest had casted one greater heal. That's it. We're playing. You're playing like a holy priest, but you're not. You're not a holy priest. It's not how you work. It's not. The, it's not what you do. That's not what you do. You're not taking advantage of your given right to be a super absorber. As a super absorber, you have so much ability to stop trying to play catch up like you're doing flash heals. You can see all these things coming out here, and the dis uh, the the other dis priests are going to be like, oh, we can't really do this we shouldn't be doing that's not how it's played we actually start to forget our other stuff as you can see lots of binding heals coming out again uh, all sorts of other craziness going on our palms not being fired around which is just wonderful for proccing all sorts of stuff more binding heals be careful binding heals a wonderful spell binding heal is a spell that people just never bind which is actually really useful in some scenarios binding heal is a great spell we're casting it wrong because we're casting binding heal when in fact we have full health. Okay? Binding heal is very expensive. Look, we're down 100k mana. Binding heal is very expensive. And we're casting binding heal while we're at full health. As you can see there, look, we're binding heal and we're at full health. We don't do that. That, no. No, 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 no. No, we don't do that. Okay. Mm-mm. No. 
Binding Heal is emergency situation only. Okay. Binding Heal is like, come on. Now I need to do it. Now I need to do it. And we're doing this combination of healing, which is just not what we're trying to do. We're trying to... What is our job as a Dis Priest? What is our role? That's the easiest way to think about it. You come into the raid as a disciplined priest. What is your job? Your job is to get giant fucking bubbles on everybody. Big, giant fucking absorb shields. That's your job. Now, what's the best way of going about that? We have things like inner focus, which is great. Spirit shell. All these things. We've got power infusion. And then we've got atonement where we can just be throwing them out left and right and contributing damage. Our job isn't to put out raw HPS. It's not to do that. We're not trying to put out raw HPS. That's the other people's jobs. Resto Shaman and Resto Druids are great at putting out raw HPS. Our job is to make sure that people are always in good shape. Always in good shape. We want them to do that. Now, there's another problem that priests tend to run into. The priests that lack a little bit of jumping experience, I would say. Jumping experience. As you can see, these. we finally used Mindbender. Spirit Shell still hasn't been used. We're two minutes in. I think if we skip along to about... We're at four minutes... And we can see we've still not spirit shelled at all. Just not used it. Still getting a focus sitting there. Uh, all these kind of things are going on. We're focused a little bit. We're waiting for that penance. We're waiting for penance all the time. It's like penance is such a great spell. Oh, I want to wait for my penance. I want to make sure my penance is good and all this kind of stuff. But we're just not dissing. Now the next thing that I notice, which is always good and relevant to all healers. Is that about five minutes is somebody's going to die. Which seems kind of shitty. Seems kind of shitty. Now, we could have prevented this. There's the old prayer of healing doing its thing. Spirit shell prayer of healing. Lovely, lovely, lovely. There we go. We finally spirit shelled five minutes. That was about five minutes. We finally dropped a spirit shell on somebody and had a happy old day. There goes that binding heal again. Careful with that binding heal. You're going to screw yourself really badly at some points with binding heal. Now, watch what happens here. Watch what happens here. There's our mouse. We're going to heal this Shamaman. We're going to heal this Shamaman. But look at our Rep Paladin. Now, at, the, at this point, it's kind of okay to have made this decision a little bit. It's kind of okay to have made this decision in the middle of a fight. Because both of them were even here. Both of them. Then the Shaman took the damage. Then the Shaman took the damage. And then we moved here. We put a bubble on the tank. Good. We prioritized the tank over the Shaman because he's a healer. Then we decide, now the Rep Pally was there, look at his damage, so we're still prioritizing as a priest. We clicked on the Shaman, but oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Look what we're casting here. Look what we're casting. We're casting Heal. Heal is, it's what we cast when nobody's got any, you know, Heal's Heal. We just do shit. We're just like, it's like, it's a Queef, right? Heal's a Queef. Uh, heal's a Queefy Queefy. Now, oh, lay on hands. 10 man rep paladin. I'm only kidding. What should we have done? Ah! What should we have done here? If this was me, void shift, interesting, maybe. Maybe we would have gone with the void shift. Am I void shifting the rep paladin? Hmm, maybe. Maybe. At this percentage, yeah, I would, maybe, I would maybe rock a void shift, perhaps. What I would actually do, my instinct as uh, an old school priest, now bear in mind, I've, I've not played a main healing priest since vanilla, so that's okay. But my instinct with this priority system would be to jump, first of all, to cancel the cast of heal, tap, tap escape if you want, I've never liked tapping escape, and then penanced him. That what, that's what my instinct would have been. Perhaps if I'd been super baller, I might have even done an inner focus, penance, whatever, something along those lines. But we didn't. Now watch what happens. This is kind of a problem that a lot of healers have. We're casting. Now you can see he goes, oh my god, Rep Paladin's gonna die. Dude, brah, we need your terrible DPS. Sorry. Dude, brah, we need that DPS. And we move to it, and it's there. It's like, oh my god. But we continue to cast this heal. And what we decided to do was actually let this heal finish while our paladin is the situation. Now, there's a couple of thoughts that could have been going on here. One is like, ah, oh, well, the rest of Druid's bound to swift mend it. I mean, he's in tree farm. Look at this bro right here. Uh, <laughs> look at our bro, Resto Druid. No, our Resto Druid is out of mana. Lol. Only kidding. Uh, <laughs> our Resto Druid is completely out of mana, uh, just about keeping up with our Dis Priest. And we've not even bothered using Mind Mender, by the way. Get it together, Resto Druid, you know what I mean? And we continue this cast, and... Oh, look! God 
damn. And he died. A lot of people do this as healers, is we're like, well, we're casting. Cancelling casting is vitally important. You need to be able to do it at the drop of a hat. You need to be able to go, oh, fuck. You need that oh, fuck response as a healer. A lot of people have like, nature, swiftness, healing touch, macros for those oh, fuck moments, right? You've got this big heal. You press that button. This guy's going to get like 500k, 400k, 300k, whatever you've got it bound to. I just press one key. This motherfucker's safe. We've got this lay on hands button, whatever it is. This priest kind of had that as well. With the voice shift. But I would have seen that damage kind of ticking, ticking, ticking down. My instinct would be to certainly not finish the cast off a heal, by any means, a heal. Especially with Penance sat there, which would have been ticking counter, ticking counter, ticking counter, and smashing that health back up. Or if you wanted to use a void shift, if you really thought he was going to die. It was actually quite difficult for me to see where our rep friend was. Uh, I couldn't quite see what was killing him. I assumed he... Let's see if we can see him. Let's go to... So yeah, let's try again. Let's see if any of you guys can actually spot where our rep pally is. Let's see if we can see anybody doing terrible DPS. Let's have a look. See, see. Him. Da, 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 da. He's dying now. He's. I mean, he's got to be. He's there, right? Is that him? Yeah, he has aggro. He taunted, for sure. He fucking taunted. No, he's got aggro. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. He hasn't got the red border. Hmm. Adds, yeah, just the sand, maybe just the sand. So he's a derper anyway, but you should always be on derp watch, right? Healers, you know who your derpers are. Toss him a shield every now and again. You know who they are. Healers, come on, you know who they are. You know the fucking derp. You know the derpers. You know who they are. I know. I knew who my derpers were in my raid. Got to be on derp watch. Just throw the guy a fucking heal every now and again. Just stick a bubble on him. Just, just. It's not worth the hassle. If he's a derpy derper, healers know who they are. Let him die. Not gonna help. Not going to help when you're on a kill. Yeah, adds. Oh, he went ham with his Divine Storm. <laughs> okay. And, yeah, that situation right there is something you've got to watch for, where your priorities change really quickly. Sign of a good healer. If you can make a snap decision in less than a second over changing priorities, cancelling a cast, and preventing that guy's death. Got to note, that, that combat res, swag. That's a swaggy combat res right there. Uh, that is really doing... That's, that's a combat res that's doing work. Really like it. Really like to see that. And then we go back to the flash heals and so on and so forth. And we fall back into this binding heal again. Got to sort out this binding heal. Got to sort it out. We're just throwing out big heal numbers for no reason at all. And it's all about just not doing it right. We're not dissing. So the big tip for you is think about what your role actually is. You're not there to put out the raw HPS. It's not your job. That guy might have been saved if you already had a nice shield on him. Especially if he's the derper. He might not be. His people get caught out every now and again. But it's about putting up this huge amount of health. And increasing the level of health on the raid. Preventing big damage. That's how we do it. Your issue isn't really your awareness. Which you thought it was. In your email it was like, my awareness isn't that great. You know, I'm tunneling my note. I'm tunneling this and that and that. It's not really a problem. What you're doing is you're trying to play a healer. And you are a healer. But you heal in a different way. You prevent damage instead of actually trying to heal health bars. That's really how you work. That's your mainstay. That's your priority. When you look at your healing meters afterwards, you shouldn't see things like flash heal, binding heal, great heal. You should see things like spirit shell. Gotta get that spirit shell used so much more. It means spammy, spammy, spammy with the spirit shell. Inner focus. All these kind of spells need to be way, way up there. Because I guarantee, I tried to find your world of logs. I tried to find them, but apparently your guild doesn't record them. I would suggest you do. So you can start checking these things out. Those should be your top heals. Look on World of Logs. Look at the top disc priests. And see if there's spells being cast. First of all that you're not casting. Or if they're not casting spells that you cast all the time. You'll quickly see that things like Flash Heal, Greater Heal. They just don't get cast really. They don't do it. Alright. Pretty important. So that's our disc priest. Mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. I, wanna see, I would love to see a follow up. Where you play entirely different. Where you play as a disc priest. Right now you'd be more at home as a holy priest. But you'd probably be less effective to the raid. I just want to say that. Your combination of healers there isn't too bad. Isn't too bad. Right then. Prot warrior time. Oh yeah. Pro I love prot warriors. Now. Our prot warrior came to me with several issues. We're going to be looking at Primordius Heroic. Good little fight for a prot warrior actually. Or a tank in general. Lots of movement. Lots of positioning. Magnifique for a workshop to check out all sorts of stuff. As such, I have, like, tons of notes, which is awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're going to be looking at Primordius Heroic. Thank God it's not Sko's UI. Am I with me? You with me? 
Let's go. Let's go. So we'll look at the UI first of all. It's actually really nice. I quite like this. Although, I don't think I've ever seen anybody who... A, a warrior, a tank, anyway, who didn't have Omen, but did in fact have damage taken as one of the noted bars on the screen. I don't believe I've ever seen that. Ever, ever seen that. Any comments on the UI? I personally think it's pretty delicious. Personally, I think it's pretty delicious. I cover that. I cover the chat so well. This camera positioning. Who is this guy running the stream? What a guy. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I tell you the best thing about this that I absolutely adore is this predict prediction of uh, the damage reduction of shield barrier and shield block. I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah, it's very nice. This is lovely, by the way. This is lovely. It is covering your boss health bar, but whatever. We can get away with that. Uh, this cooldowns thing, I actually think looks really, really tidy. Absolutely love this. It looks... It just Everything just looks really nice. Uh, your two main things there and your rage bar there. In fact, you don't need to look here at all. So, yeah, really like it. No problems with it at all. The damage taken meter, I could live without that. I could live without that. Unless there's somebody hilarious on it, like my rogue when I did the apathy thing. Uh, that would be kind of funny. That would be, that could be, yeah, that could be kind of cool, I suppose. Now, a couple of problems that our warrior had. One, he does not use his offensive cooldowns ever. Ever. And he's aware of it. He said to me, he's like, I just don't use my offensive cooldowns. At all. I don't use them. I just, that's just, that's just the way of life. I don't use them. I like, and he says, I need to sort this out. I've got a big problem. I don't use my own. So, no avatar, no bloodbath uh, doesn't get used. Doesn't get used at all. And the other one is, when do I ask people for cooldowns? This is a big one. A lot of people don't like this question. And he said, I fall into the trap where I'm at 5% HP and I go, Oh my god, give me a cooldown because I'm going to die. I've already used my shield wall. I'm about to fucking explode into flame. Give me a cooldown. Give me a cooldown. Which is obviously no good because player reaction, human factor, going over voice comms, all that kind of stuff plays into it and you're dead. Sucks. Sucks balls. Um, now, <laughs> sorry, that's not your biggest problem, I'm going to say that right now, that is not your biggest problem, you have a suicidal tendency, because you do something which was just making my eyes bleed, and I really need to beat this out of you very, very quickly, like really need to fix this so quickly, it's not the use of DPS cooldowns, and it is not the use of asking for cooldowns. You, my friend, have a big problem with turning your back to mobs and you are going to wipe a lot because of it. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you possibly the most terrifying one minute of this video. Um, and it is, yeah, it's about 5 minutes and 20. Where we go full ham. What you're doing is strafing. I see what you're doing, but what you do is you're so borderline on the strafe. He's so borderline on the strafe that every few seconds you are just taking hits in the back like a champ. Like a champ. You can see this kind of strafe. Look at this. This is how we move. We're kind of just trying to keep it on the strafe angle all the time. Now, we can't do that. We can't do that. Because what happens is that is, you know, he's facing there. He's facing there. And watch, look at the health. Watch the health when we do this. Moving. Down. Ow, 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 ow. And that is just straight up. Ow, ow, ow. Ow. Okay. Ow, ow, ow. And then we go and get our ad. And then we go and get our ad. And we're moving it again. And we're just... You're going to die. We're going to die doing this okay because this thing is just smashing you in your wreck literally literally in the bum all the time just smashing you in the face smashing you right in the rectum right in the baboon right in the pooper okay right in the pooper so we move around like this and you can see the damage we're taking the damage we're taking the damage we're taking and then we find this kind of settle on position and then we keep moving around, and when we move, we move our back to it. Yeah, we're getting anal on a pretty regular basis. And it happens all too often. In fact, we're going to see, because I wanted to get it out of the way, because it's going to happen kind of throughout the video. It's going to happen a lot. 
It's a really bad habit. Because you are taking tremendous amounts of damage all the time. That is m so unnecessary. It is not needed at all. And at least five times through this video does it put it in serious danger of death. You are putting yourself and your raid in the case of a wipe by doing that. Most of the time, you are kind of pulling it off. Where you're, you're just like that. If that was getting hit, you're like there. And it's just kind of working. It's just kind of working. But then you just full on put your back to it. And you're going to die doing that. Okay? It might not be this boss. It might not be the next. But you do that. And the healers aren't really Johnny on the fucking spot with it. You're going to die. You're going to die doing that. Now, as a tank. I love doing tank workshops. Oh, I love it. We don't have a plan. We need a plan. Every tank should have a plan for the first 20 seconds of a fight. I mean a plan. A total fucking plan. We need a plan like... I mean, serious Call of Duty plan, alright? We need a plan of everything we're going to do. We don't have a plan. And we can see that with position. Our job at the beginning of a fight is to get the boss, get it aggroed, get it into a position where the DPSs can go hardcore always in, okay? So we kind of move it off to... There's the backpedaling. Like I said, we're going to see it a lot. Um, we get into this position, and we're kind of settled in. It's kind of okay. Maybe it's a little far from the edge for me. Personally, I don't like him uh, being this close to the wall. I really don't like that. Even on Heroic, I don't like that. We start putting our back to him. Getting some rage, yo. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting my rage up. Getting my rage. And then we start spinning around. And we come into position. And we're just... Your melee will hate you for this. It will absolutely hate you for this. Absolutely hate you for this. For this spinning around thing that's going on. The spinning around. Not going to like it. So then we get our ad. And we go and do this. Now, this is a good tip for any tank that's doing the uh, this primordial heroic. What does this ad do? What does this ad do? Tanks. Tanks, I know you heroic raiders watch me. Feel free to actually chip in instead of hiding in the smug corner. Going, <laughs> did you see that at 4 minutes and 12, Preach said bloodbath instead of dragon's raw? <laughs> what does that ad do? What does it do? Shit on the floor? No. Shit on the floor. Explodes when he reaches the boss and wipes the raid. Boom! Yes, it does. And that, and Papastrilo! Papastrilo. Well, Papastrilo nailed it. Ten yards. Ten yards. Ten yards ain't shit in a raid. Now, we're starting to get into the world of Horridon tactics, where things go a little bit wacky. It's ten yards. This is where a good tank starts to shine. Because ten yards is not a long way away. I want you to put yourself in the mind of a ranged DPSer. I'm a ra I'm a mage, especially an RK mage. I'm an RK mage. Everything here will get DPSed. Everything here. Things that are there and there, I'm never touching in my fucking life. Right? Only the absolute best of the best don't care about their DPS. Ranged DPS will actually bother to turn their fucking heads. I don't care what guild it is, they won't. Unless it's a huge DPS increase, they won't bother. If you give your ranged DPS a buff that increases their damage massively on one target, unless you literally spoon feed them other mobs to DPS, they're not going to touch them. This is why Primordius is great for good tanks, because what you do is you match the path of Primordius with the ad. You keep it circling round. All this ad does is if it goes close to Primordius, it's going to explode. So we don't need to get within 10 yards. Other than that, it just debuffs the tank. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all, okay? Range DPS are not only going to be pissed, but they're probably going to ignore it. Please stop putting your back to the ad. <laughs> so Primordius is here. We want to be following a path near him. But we definitely want it to be facing in front of the casters. All the time. We need to be matching this path. All the way around. Because once it starts moving out, they're going to start ignoring it. Unless it is in their direct range. And why it's in their direct range is so important. Is because they can see the health bar. Every ranged DPS are worth his salt has some, thought of, some sort of health bar above the ad. A clear health bar. So that it's easier for them to DPS. Every ranged DPS has that. Unless they're really bad. Okay? You need to have that. So if you stick another health bar in front of their face, then they're going to probably do something about it. They're going to want to kill it. Because ranged DPS want to kill things. 
but they want to kill the boss and they want to have high DPS. So they're going to want to have it spoon fed to them to make sure they do it. As such, you increase the raid's DPS passively without them realizing it. It's one of the glorious parts of being a tank is you can increase the whole raid's DPS without them even noticing that it was what you were doing. Barely any DPSer is going to go, oh, it was really good how you kept that mob circling round in a really uniform pack with Primordius. No raid's DPS is going to say that. They're going to go, whoa, look how much damage I did. But you've increased it passively. They don't, you don't need the congratulations. You don't need a slap on the ass. You don't need to be all like, high fi I did a good job. You're just going to do it passively. Now what happens is it starts getting lost. It starts getting lost in the... Uh, it starts getting lost in the ether where we kind of just get it to the middle. Our job is, seems to be quite simple. Get add, get middle. We're a tank. We're tanking an ad. It's about the most simple thing we can do as a tank. Get ad, get middle. Blah. Okay, we're not derpers. We're tanks. We're bros, okay? And bros go the extra mile. Because what the fuck else are you going to do? Ask yourself this. What else are you doing? You're trying to DPS this thing down on your own? Okay, have fun with that. What we're really after doing is just like... Making sure that it goes down and it gets helped into, into the line of it. That's all we're trying to do. That's all we're trying to do. We get it into the middle. We do a little bit. We're all having fun. And we can see some star fires and shit dropping on. But our camera's there. Look where Primordius is now. Look where he is. And watch. The, do you think the range DPS are moving with you? Lol, melee. Yeah, the melee are really going to help with this one. Let me know how that goes. And by the way, any melee who does go and help, kick them. Because if they should be raging. <laughs> if I was told to go and switch this ad because the range weren't doing enough damage. Not for me. Not for me. Look where he is. Primordius is over here. Now we're grabbing this ad. And then we're moving around. And we should be always trying to get into a position. Always trying to get into a position that accommodates both. We're trying to accommodate both. Because look where the ranged are. Let's look at what they're doing. Does it, look what they're doing. Okay? We're always trying to increase the raid's DPS. Even if they only throw a couple of dots on it, it all helps. It all helps go towards the cars. We want to help the cars because you start getting up to nine, ten stacks. Not cool to get all those stacks, really. Not the best. Look at this, guys. Look at this mage. I love it. I love it. It's the first of arcane explosion. Fucking love that shit. Absolutely awesome. We do not have a plan. We have no plan with what we're doing with these ads, and that's no good. We have no plan whatsoever with what we're doing with these ads, and we need a plan. We absolutely always have a plan of what we're doing. Try thinking about ways. This is the best tip I can give you as a tank. Every time you're doing a job, try and think of how to do it better. Simple. How can this go better for everybody? Not just yourself. Not just yourself. Obviously, what's one thing we could say is, oh, you should be blowing blood bath on this. Or you should be doing this and that. Try and think, how can this be done better in order to make this raid better? That's all you need to think. If you're doing especially a simple job like tank ad, try and think how we can make it better. Really important. As a tank, you should always be thinking that. How can I improve this next time? Because if you're off tanking, that's kind of fine. But you always want to be thinking about how I can make this better for my raid. This is not helping. It's not helping. Because look where everybody is. Look where your demo locks are and all this. They're all around here and they're all following around. They're all doing their thing. And you should always be thinking as a tank, how can I make it? Now this is good. Look at this. This is more like it. We're getting together. We should be moving as a team. Look at that line. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Your tank swaps are going to go fine. It's all going to go well. Ooh, dangerous though. Be a little bit careful. Don't want to blow up the raid. And that line was absolutely awesome. That was the good position right there. That's what we wanted to see. Let's just see it again. This is, what, this is the kind of thing you should be looking for. This symmetry. Look at this. That's what we want. Because all your ranged are there. See them all in this nice big semicircle. Your ranged are all here. Look at that. Right on a plate for them. That's what you want all the time. That's what you want all the time. If you can aim for that, you're going to be good. You're going to be in good shape. You're going to be having a nice plan, and it's all good. And then we go into suicidal tendencies, which is a little bit scary. We'll play that again. Uh, while we're playing the suicidal tendencies, just to reiterate, please don't do this any tanks at all. Crispus tits. Crispus tits. The uh, cooldown DPS cooldown issue. DPS cooldown issue. So the big cooldown is I'm not the big issue is I'm not using my DPS cooldowns. He does use skull banner. I assume it's being asked for. Okay, can you drop skull banner? 
So he's doing it. What he's not using is like his bloodbath and things like that. What I will say is this. If you're struggling to use them or you're thinking you're trying to save them for something and they go unused as a tank, first thing you should start doing is putting it right in your face. Okay? Right in your face. So look where Shield Slam and Revenge is. This is for any tank who's not really using his DPS cooldowns enough, nay, at all. Okay? Stick it here and start using it on cooldown. Just start using it on cooldown. Start training your hands to be pressing the fucking button. That's what you want to do straight away. Use it on cooldown. It doesn't matter if you waste it. It's better than it not getting used. Okay? If it's not getting used at all, using it on cooldown, even at the wrong moments, is better. Flat out simple. Dead easy to remember. Just start using it. Okay? Just start using it. Now you're getting used to pressing it. You're getting into the habit of pressing it. And you'll naturally start to think more and more about when you should press it. Start using it on cooldown, and then you'll naturally start to learn, oh, well, I'll just wait a couple of seconds, but it's in your face, it's ready to go, and you'll start using it. Because they're important cooldowns. They're really important cooldowns, okay? Start using it more, and then you'll start naturally to pick up when you should be using it effectively. Ergo, you'll then get great use out of it, okay? Great use out of it. Couple of tips, please, for the love of God. Say it with me. I will not put my back to any mobs. Don't do that. Because you're going to risk death. It's going to be a bad shake. And then people are going to say, Oh, you didn't dodge anything. Don't do that. Don't do that, okay? Be good. Don't do that. Start using your DPS cooldowns on cooldown. And then gradually work out to using them effectively. Just stick it somewhere in your face so you start pressing it naturally. Train your hands. Get into the thought process of how regular it comes off cooldown. One of the great things about regularly pressing DPS cooldowns is you get a natural feeling for when they're going to come off cooldown. You're like, oh, I, I'm pretty sure my bloodbath is up in a few seconds. And blah, there it is. After a few raids, it will just come naturally. The other thing to do, don't worry about the shield block, shield barrier thing. It's no big deal. It's not on this fight. Block's really good anyway, so it doesn't matter. What I will say is this. Position. I, never, I stress it on every tank video, but it's important. You have the power to increase your raid's DPS. Do it. The quicker ads die, the quicker people just help out a little bit. The quicker a little bit of extra splash damage, a little bit of cleave damage... All that kind of stuff. Because you've got to understand, your DPSers want to cleave. They want to cleave. They desperately want to. What they don't want to do is do and go out of their way to do it. They don't want to do that. A melee wants to cleave. A DK wants to spread his dots. What he doesn't want to do is have to start running around to do it. He wants you to bring it to him as best you possibly can. Okay? So do that. Think about it. If you're doing a simple job as a tank, how can you do it better? How can this be done? Are you just off tanking ads? Can you get them in a ball? Do they do something which is dangerous? Okay, then how best can I do it? If these ads cleave, where can I put them so I can get the most damage out of them and help my raid? So important to do that. So important to do that. When asking for cooldowns, the answer is simple. It all comes down to learning the fight. If you know, for instance, that your shield wall, last stand, rallying cry, whatever, demoralizing banner, whatever it might be, demo shout, is on cooldown. This is for any tank. And something is going to happen. Okay, something is going to happen. So it's not really a case on Primordius, but you see you've got Primordial Strike and Volatile Pathogen in four or five seconds. Tell yourself this. You need to give your healers at least seven to five seconds warning before they ask for a cooldown. You want to say, can you give me a, can you give me a pain expression in a few seconds? Can you do this? What I will say is your raid is actually pretty much on the case. If we skip to here, you can see that most of the cooldowns had been used. We haven't used a hop, but that's not really relevant. We've used Life Cocoon, we've used Revival, we've used Tranquility. Uh, we've used both Devotion Auras and a Pain Suppression. And your other warrior has used Rally Cry and Demo Barrier. So the cooldowns are being used. So don't worry about it too much. Your raid is using them. But you need at least 7 to 5 seconds. If you're worried that Blat is going to happen in a few seconds, then ask for a cooldown. If you randomly dip to 5%, panic all you want. People probably aren't going to react that quickly. It's kind of on you. But still, ask. But that's not your fault. If you randomly dip, and I don't mean because you turned your back to the boss and he smashed you in the ass and then suddenly you dipped, that's your fault. If you randomly are tanking a boss and you do dip, that's on you. Okay? So that's on you to try and sort out. Ask for help if necessary. Hope your healers are awake. But everything else generally is going to be predetermined when it's going to kill you. Most abilities in mop on bosses... You know when they're coming and they have a countdown. Seven, seven, seven to five seconds is when you need it. All right, guys? That's when you need it. Ah, that is today's workshop. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Ooh, prop warriors, dis priest. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. That is today's workshop, guys. And that is me done live for today. We're going to be making a PG video for you tonight. 
Uh, Mr. Ghosty is on his way here to have a good time. I will be live streaming in the morning. Um, I will Facebook what time I'm going to be streaming. I have to drop a car off early in the morning. I have to drop a car off, so I might be slightly later than usual. I will certainly be on by 10. Certainly be on by 10. Thank you to everybody who tuned in with me today for our Bastion stream. And thank you to all of you here right now for the workshop. And to everybody on YouTube, I hope you're having a good day. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye, guys. See ya.